Hi, I'm Dr. Tala and I've been a neonatologist for 16 years now. And today we're going to cover five mnemonics that are going to help you for NRP. I made up a couple and a couple of them are actually from the NRP program. The first one is ragu, R-A-G-U, like the pasta sauce. And what this one covers is the four questions that you need to ask the obstetrical team before you attend a delivery. These aren't in the right order, but it doesn't really matter. So R is for risk factors. So this encompasses just about anything. Is it twins, PIH, IDM? Is there a bad strip? A is the amniotic fluid. What does the amniotic fluid look like? Is it clear? Is there meconium? Is it bloody? G is for gestational age. So according to the best clinical estimate, is the baby term or premature or whatever? And then U is umbilical cord management. So that's the point that you decide with the OB team, are you gonna do delayed cord clamping or whatever? So ragu. The second mnemonic covers whether a baby immediately after delivery can stay with the mother on the mother's chest or whether it has to go to the radiant warmer to be evaluated by the neonatal team. So the mnemonic is better. Capital B, little e, capital T, capital T, E, R. It is better for the baby to stay with the mother. So if the baby is breathing or crying, if the baby is term, so above 37 weeks, and if the baby has good tone, which means that it's kind of kicking and active, it's not just lying there like a limp doll, like just like a rag doll, if you can say yes to all those three things, so yes, baby is breathing, yes, baby is term, yes, baby has good tone, then the baby can stay with mother. So it is better for the baby to stay with mother. The third mnemonic is a bit of a silly one. It's definitely not an official NRP one. And it basically covers your initial steps when a baby comes to the radiant warmer. And the mnemonic is wiggly dolphin swim past sharks. So let's cover those individually. So your initial evaluation, the baby wasn't able to stay with mummy on the chest. So your initial evaluation on the warmer is that W, you have to warm the baby. So hopefully the baby is under a radiant warmer, you put on a hat. D, you have to dry the baby. So you prevent any evaporative heat loss. S, you may have to stimulate the baby. So by gently rubbing the baby's back or by like rubbing the baby's feet gently. And then P, you want to position the airway so that the baby's in sniffing position. So basically the baby's eyes should be looking forward towards the ceiling. You don't want the baby's neck hyperextended and you don't want the baby's necks hyperflexed. So you want to position the head so that the baby is in sniffing position. And then S, you want to suction the baby if the baby has secretions. So again, put the baby's cheek to one side and suction out the mouth and then suction the nares afterwards. So remember, MN is in alphabetical order. Always suction out the mouth before the nares. So again, the mnemonic is wiggly dolphins swim past sharks. I just love it. The next mnemonic is one that you all know, and that is Mr. Soper. So those are the ventilatory adjustments that you have to make if the baby is not responding to PPV. So the heart rate isn't going up, you don't have good chest movement. So Mr. Soper. Let's go over these. So the first one is mask. So make sure that the mask has a good fit over the baby's nose and mouth. Sometimes you have to push a bit harder. Sometimes the mask itself needs to be inflated more. Sometimes it's just the wrong size mask. So just make sure that you have a tight seal with the mask on the baby's face. And you can tell if there's a tight seal because you'll be able to give the pip and the peep that you're trying to give. R is reposition the baby's head. So again, you don't want the baby to be flexed. You don't want the baby to be hyperextended. You want the baby in a good sniffing position. S is suction. So again, just like the previous suction, you want to suction out any secretions from the baby's mouth or the baby's nose. Sometimes you have to go down with like a deep suctioning with an actual catheter if there really are copious secretions kind of blocking the airway. 
O is open the mouth on this mannequin. The mouth is nicely open. But a lot of the times, even when we're doing PPV, the mouth is kind of like nearly closed. And just by opening the mouth, and we're literally doing this with one of our fingers, just by opening the mouth, it can decrease the resistance to the pressure going in. And that can really help give the positive pressure ventilation. So O is open the mouth. P is increase the pressure of the PIP that you're giving. So depending on what equipment you're using to deliver your PPV, you're gonna go up on the PIP in different ways. So normally you're dialing it up a bit. Usually you're starting at a PIP of between 20 to 25 centimeters of water, and you should go up by about five centimeters of water, hoping that increased pressure is gonna help open up the lungs. In a preemie baby, you really shouldn't be going above 35, and in a term baby, don't go above 40 centimeters of water. So P is for pressure increase. And then A, when all of the other previous steps have failed, you still don't have good ventilation, maybe your heart rate is still low, then at that point, you need to consider an alternative airway. So either you're inserting a laryngeal mask or you're actually doing an endotracheal intubation. So A is for alternative airway. And that was Mr. Sopa. Make sure you know those steps really well because they are a big part of NRP. And the last mnemonic, which actually also comes from NRP, is to remind you what could be going wrong when the baby is intubated and the baby is desaturating or br having bradycardia. So the baby is decompensated even though the baby is intubated. And the mnemonic is DOPE, D-O-P-E. So the different things that could be happening when a baby's a decompensating and the baby's intubated is D, displaced tube. So the endotracheal tube may be out or just in the wrong place. O, the endotracheal tube may be obstructed, whether there's a big glob of mucus in there or something like that. P, there could be a pneumothorax. So the tube is still in place, but obviously we've got this huge accumulation of air in the chest wall and the lungs are just getting smaller and smaller and unable to breathe. Or E, there could be some sort of equipment failure. Maybe the vent isn't working, the baby isn't getting the FiO2 or whatever else. So dope, a good one to remember anytime a baby who's on the vent who is actually decompensating. And that was it, five quick mnemonics which will hopefully help you in the delivery room and in the NICU. If you got this far, please like this video and please consider joining our membership so that you can kind of help us choose which videos we're gonna do next. And we give you loads of other stuff as well, like behind the scenes videos, and we're gonna start worksheets soon. So please come join us.